now Holy Spirit we need you right now Holy Spirit we need you right now Holy Spirit we need you right now Holy we need you right now Holy Spirit so God as I stand here as your servant for the moment I ask that you just take over so that the words that you gave me, I can give to the people in the way in which that you want it to be heard today. So use me, God, and use me good. Because at the end of the day, I'm still going to ride with you and give you all the praise and all the glory. So God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I love it when we have technical challenges because it just reminds me that God's still going to do what God's going to do. This morning we will find ourselves in a letter that Paul wrote to the churches of Galatia. And from the beginning, Paul is making clear that there is one gospel, one good news from God. There's one gospel, one truth from God that is able to save anybody. And what Paul is doing in this, in this book of Galatians is he's addressing false teachers who were saying, no, that's, that's not the gospel. That's not it. That's, that's, it's that plus adding work specifically that you need for salvation. That's what the, 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 he called them the Judaizers were saying that they needed to do some things to add. But God says that we are saved by grace and grace alone through faith in Jesus. So the gospel that we have today is from the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. And I have pulled up the easy-to-read version today because I like that one. It's easy to read. And it reads as this. A short time ago, God chose you to follow him. He chose you through his grace that came through Christ. But now I am amazed that you are already turning away and believing something different from the good news we told you. There is no other message that is the good news but some people are confusing you. They want to change the good news about Christ. We told you the true good news message. So anyone who tells you a different message should be condemned, even if it's one of us or even an angel from heaven. I said this before. Now I'm going to say it again. You have already accepted the good news. Anyone who tells you another way to be saved should be condemned. Now, do you think I'm trying to make people accept me? No. God is the one I'm trying to please. Am I trying to please people? If I wanted to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. If I wanted to please people, I would not be a servant of How many of us find ourselves 
still bound to trying to please other people. <laughs> Go ahead and say, that's the story of my life. Still trying to please other people. So today I'm talking about being released from yourself and from other people and their expectations of you and their desires of whatever they think you should be doing, however you should be acting, however you should just be in this world. And for, the, for a few moments this morning, I really want to focus on this 10th verse. Now, do you think I'm trying to make people accept me? No, God is the one I'm trying to please. Am I trying to please people? If I wanted to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Now, there's another version of the Bible. It's called The Voice. And it sounds just like me without some extra words that I may add here and there every now and then. And it says, do you think I care? You sound like me, right? Do you think I care about the approval of men or the approval of God? Do you think I'm on a mission to please people? If I am still spinning my wheels trying to please men, then there is no way I can be a servant of the anointed one, the liberating king, because you can't liberate me from nothing. So this is about me and God. So in other words, the, the sermon thought, the title for the sermon is, today is Please God, Not People. Note to self. Please God, not people. Note to self. And, and that little box says, put that back up, Jerry. In order to please God, you may have to disappoint some people. And that might be the one that's closest to you, but the one who is even closer is God. The truth is that we spend way too much time trying to please everybody else and that we lose ourselves and our identities with God. We spend so much time trying to please other people that we lose our self-identity and our identity with God. We can't even afford the newest, the best, the latest, all of that, but we get it anyway. We break our necks trying to fit in. We go bankrupt trying to fit in. And bankrupt is not just bankrupt in your finances. I'm talking about bankrupt in your feelings. Well is right. You so busy trying to make everybody happy, your boss happy. But the work you do is never good enough. Your husband, your wife, your partner, whomever, the children, trying to make them happy all in the name of acceptance. But what I want to know is, what are you doing to please the God that you say you love and serve? What are you doing to please that God? See, we, we, we want to fit in so badly, not realizing that we will never fit in. Because this is not our eternal home. This is just temporary. Now, your temporary might be 90 years, but it's still temporary. God, heaven is where we're trying to go. The real problem with people pleasing is that people's expectations are always changing. They're fickle. They're wishy-washy. And just when you seem like you've reached it, they move the line again. The bar of excellence keeps changing, so we never are able to satisfy people. But what I'm happy about is that God's expectations never change. They never change. They are the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He says, I am the Lord your God, and I changest not. Every now and then, I'll go to the King James Version. I change this not. I'm the only thing in your life 
that will not change. So why you keep moving away from me? Because I'm your only constant. What we need in our lives is somebody who doesn't have an agenda. Just one somebody. One somebody who's committed to keeping it real with us no matter what. And the truth is that that one somebody is God. See, when you need, what do you say? Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, right? When, when you need healing, you call Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals. If you want some peace, Jehovah Shalom. And if you want God to be near you, you call on Jehovah Shammah. God is the constant in our lives. See, people pleasing puts us in bondage because we're always competing against them and their, and their desires of their own hearts that they put on us. It puts us in bondage because as long as we're not living up to their standards, we'll feel low about ourselves. Even though we might look like we have it all together, the truth of the matter is that, is that we don't. And that bondage makes us insecure. As long as we're not meeting up to man's standard, we'll keep on feeling like we're nothing, like we're nobody, like we're a failure, like we can't do anything right. Even though if we look back over our lives, we can see where God has truly brought us from. Because we don't look like what we've been through. Hallelujah. But we still trying to meet somebody else's standard. You should have seen me last week. I'm not even going to go in the last year. Good God. If you had seen me yesterday morning. Telling you know I'm not a morning person. I'm just saying we have our own lives to live. Our own races to run. And it cannot be compared to anybody else's. So whatever you expect of me. Thank you very much. Keep it to yourself. One of the benefits of being delivered from people pleasing is that you don't care anymore about what others think. You don't care anymore about what others think. You, it doesn't matter. You're not paying the bills in here. This is my life, and I'm going to walk the life that God has given me. Look at the text. It says it very, very clearly. It says, if I am still spinning my wheels trying to please men, which means you're staying in the same place. You're trying to please somebody else, and you're spinning your wheel. You're not going anywhere. What's the point? The point of life is to go along the continuum that God has planned for you. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot place pleasing man over pleasing God. There are three things for sure. Jerry, pull that slide up for me. Three things are for sure. When you engage in people pleasing, you are out of integrity with yourself, your goals, your dreams, and your life's mission. You are out of integrity. In other words, you're not being honest with yourself when you try to please others. Number two, you are not designed for everyone to like you. i say that again. You are not designed for everyone to like you. God designed us to love everybody. We're still looking for the word like in the Bible. Because we just don't like everybody but I'm going to love you with the love of Jesus. And that last one says, givers need to set limits because takers rarely do. Givers need to set limits because takers really do. So if you're going to give your life over to man instead of giving your life to God, the taker is going to continue to take. It's going to continue to take and take and take and take. And then you look up at your life and you go, what happened? What happened? 
30 years has gone by and you've not done the things that you really wanted to do because you was trying to please somebody else. God is the one and only competent judge of our lives. God is the only one who has fitness and authority and knows our hearts like no one else. God knows every circumstance and every reason for your actions. God is the one constant and unchangeable force in your life. God is the one who is merciful and requires you to not hurt yourself to please God. God does not require us to hurt ourselves to please God. God does not require us to hurt ourselves. I'm talking to somebody. To hurt ourselves to please God. That's human beings wanting you to hurt yourself to please them. God is the one that will not be moved by liars or whisperers, or false accusers. God is not moved by that because God sees all, knows all, hears all. The text says, if I were still seeking popularity with men, I should not be a bondservant of Christ. Now, the Greek word for bondservant is doulos which means one who gives himself up to another's will. Those whose service is used by Christ in extending and advancing his cause among men. So service is the bond servant, devoted to another to the disregard of their own interest. In Roman times, a bond servant was also a slave. Uh, and they could be used by the master in whatever way they wanted to be used. And under Roman law, a bond servant was considered the owner's personal property. I ain't nobody's personal property. I'm God's property. But slaves had no rights and were treated however the owner decided. So I'm reading this book right now called The American Daughters. When I say reading, I should say audible. I'm listening to this book because my eyes get tired. I read a lot, so I just do a lot of audio books. But American Daughters, it's about a young slave girl who becomes a spy for a group called the Daughters. And at one point in the book, she and her mother uh, run away from their master. And the mother has run before, but now she's got this 12-year-old daughter. And this is right after the mother has had a baby and the master is the father. And not only is he the father, but he kidnaps the child. He takes the child from her. So she said, enough. So she and her daughter set out. And they get pretty far. But then the mother is caught, and the young girl hides. But so she's trying to find her way. And what she ends up doing is finding her way to a plantation. And she does not know that this plantation actually belongs to that same master because she and her mother didn't live on a plantation. They lived in New Orleans in a townhouse serving the master and his family there. So of course, once the mother is, fa is found and the daughter finds her, she sees that her mother has been severely beaten. She's a slave, so the, the master could do what he wanted. And when the 12-year-old stands up to the master, he says these words. And I want you to listen carefully. He says, is that my property, in my property, telling me to keep my distance from my property? Is that my property, in my property, in this house, in my property, telling me to keep my distance from my property? He has decided that he is the one because he owns them. That is not how God treats us. 
that is not how God treats us. Throughout the New Testament, the word bond, servant, slave, and servant are applied metaphorically to someone who is absolutely devoted to Jesus. Devoted to Christ. And being devoted to God is not a chore. Because Matthew says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And often I hear people say, God will not give you more than you can handle. See, that's when I want to fight with you. Because the truth is God will give you more because God is always with you. Because God is not expecting you to fight it all on your, all on your own. So, yeah, he's going to give you more because he expects more. He expects more faith from you in him that you will say, this is a whole lot, man. What you going to do? We fight it together. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. We are placed on this earth to serve one another and to serve the true and living God by fulfilling the purpose that God has given to us in our lives. We're not here to be an exclusive servant to, to man, woman, child, pet, job, etc. no matter how much we love them. We're here to serve God and to do what God says to do. Get delivered from people. Serve God, not people. And once you get delivered and set free from people, you'll figure out your purpose. Just keep on doing what you're doing for the Lord. And it's not, and it's, it's, you go back and forth. You go back and forth because we're human. But no matter what, God is still there. Because Jesus didn't let what people said affect him. Jesus still did what Jesus was intended to do. So I say to you this morning, keep on going. Or as Eddie Kendrick said, keep on trucking, baby. See, I know I can say that here in this church because y'all know what I'm talking about. I said that to some young folks. They go, who is Eddie Kendricks? Keep on trucking, baby. You got to keep on trucking. Don't let what people say or do deter you. And I know it's easier said than done, but do you have faith in God? Then that gives you the strength to say, I'm pressing on. God wants to take you. God wants to take me to another level, but he can't do it if we keep trying to please people. So somebody in here got to, you got to put your hand on your, cell, on your chest and say, not today. This is about God. This is not about you. I love you with the love of the Lord, but this is not about you. My life is not about you. My life is what God has intended for me to do. And I'm going along for this ride because I know where he brought me from. So I'm here this morning to really encourage you to stop. Take a moment. Take stock of your life and say, I am not about pleasing people anymore. You might have to say that a few times during the day. It ain't going to be like, oh, yeah, I said it and I'm done. Nope. It's an over and over and over again thing. I will no longer be held captive by anybody else's standards. I will no longer allow other people to have power over me, my life, my decisions, Nothing. I'm living to please God, not people. I'm giving myself to God, God's will for my life. And when I do that, I can say these words. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me, 
my soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Y'all know it. Come on. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. If you're free, you need to sing this. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. And if you want to be free this morning, old school said the doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are always open. God is always open and ready for you to come to God. So if you want to join this church today, join God's family. Come on down. Or if you just want prayer today, we will pray for you. You can also visit our website, Facebook page, and all of those things. But the key this morning is I'm free. I'm no longer bound. No more chains are holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Mm. I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, God, we are grateful for that freedom. I like being loose. Being all bound and tied. It's, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to be like this. And you don't even know that you're like this. You ever think, you ever be like really conscious of how you're holding yourself? Especially if you sit in front of a computer all day. And you're sitting like that. And you don't even realize how tight you are. Got to get free. Got to get free. God, we're grateful. We're just grateful. We're grateful people. And in our freedom, God, in this freedom that you give us, God, we want to be able to give back to you just a little bit. Because we know if we feel free, we know that our little bit is going to be multiplied and multiplied doesn't matter how much, I got, whatever I have, I'm just going to give a little bit. And you're going to make sure 
that everything else is going to be taken care of because I am pleasing you and not man. So now is our time for offering, and you can give cash, check, give the five, all of the things. But we here at, at Woodland are grateful for what we get. There's some bigger churches that, are, that can't do what we do. We have, a, we have a little, but we do much. And so we're grateful. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. God, we thank you that we can always trust you. You are an, a God of abundance. And out of your mercy, God, you have given us so much. So, God, we give you this offering today. And with it, God, we worship you and give you our whole selves. So, God, take it and use it however you see fit. Because we are here to please you and follow the plans that you have of us for what we have brought here today. So, God, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm free. Hallelujah. We will now begin to prepare ourselves for the feast at the table. If you are in the sanctuary and you did not receive some communion 